بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم سو ان دا لاسٹ لیکچر وی اسٹارٹیڈ ود دس ٹاپک آف میمبرین سیپریشن ایکچولی فرام دا لاسٹ ویک وی اسٹارٹیڈ ود دس ٹاپک اینڈ ان دا لاسٹ لیکچرس آئی ہیو ڈسکسڈ اباؤٹ میمبرین مٹیریل سو اف یو ریمبر دیز فار آور آبجیکٹوز آف دیٹ لیکچر ان وچ وی اسٹیٹ دیٹ وی ہیو ٹو ڈسکس سم تھنگ اباؤٹ Uh, membrane material that membranes are uh, synthesized of different material what are those material and then what are the different types of membrane and later we said that we will switch towards membrane modules and synthesis uh, so if uh, you remember that we have discussed in detail all this stuff of membrane material and their types uh, and then we have to start with membrane modules and synthesis Uh, but before I start membrane modules and synthesis, we will quickly go through the stuff which we have already discussed. So, uh, as you remember that we said before 1930, the materials which were used for membrane, they were natural polymer. And after 1930, due to synthesis of uh, various material uh, in the industries, so they are being used for uh, synthesizing various membranes. and. Uh, we discussed that most of the time polymers are used for membrane synthesis even naturally polymer were being used they were cellulose and rubber and later on uh, I mean with the development of industries even again synthetic polymers were being used and there were different types of polymers uh, like some are linear bright and then uh, some are uh, cross linked polymers so Uh, when you look at the classification of these polymers, uh, they are classified into thermoplastic and thermosetting polymer. Thermoplastic polymer were those polymer which can be softened with the help of uh, temperature and you can increase their temperature and finally you can actually melt them, you can just break them into their monomers and uh, they can be reused. But thermosetting polymers are those which cannot be mean like broken, uh, they, they cannot be. Uh, I mean melted with the help of temperature because when you increase their temperature they will at the end decompose and uh, they can't be used again. Uh, so then we said that uh, polymer are actually when you look at the polymer you know polymers are long chain of monomers connected together. So uh, they, they are arranged either in the form of amorphous or crystalline polymers. and. Amorphous mean they do not have any specific shape and usually they look like the glass from here we said that uh, you can call them sometime as even glassy polymer but they are amorphous and uh, mean they lack crystalline structure proper uh, like arranging of chains but there are crystalline polymer they, they have uh, properly arranged chains and uh, they are usually opaque and they will have crystalline structure in this uh, diagram you can see these portion indicates this is amorphous polymer and while other uh, these indicate they are like crystalline regions. Uh, so uh, when you look at this classification uh, I mean among this uh, you know that for amorphous polymer uh, we can name them either as glassy polymer or rubbery polymer. There was one temperature that was called glass transition temperature and when some polymer that is amorphous polymer that has uh, temperature or it is it is existing at the temperature that is less than Tg glass transition temperature then that will be called as glass glassy polymer. But if you just raise its temperature and you go beyond or above this Tg the polymer becomes rubbery and uh, we discussed this that when polymer is rubbery actually that uh, that can chains can move and uh, it allows more diffusion of the permeate while in glassy polymer definitely chains are more packed and that is a bit dense as compared to this rubbery structure. So, their diffusion will be low and uh, then uh, when you look at the other uh, side which was actually crystalline polymer so we said that they have some property which is called melting temperature because when you increase their temperature you can read to a uh, point where uh, this will melt and uh, when polymer will melt this can be reused uh, I mean for again synthesizing any product but uh, there are uh, this is valid for only thermoplastic polymer which are in crystalline form if they are thermosetting polymer they cannot be like uh, melted because they will decompose when you will increase their temperature. Uh, when you look at the polymers uh, available they are usually uh, somehow amorphous as well as crystalline that is uh, not like pure amorphous or pure crystalline. most of the polymers which are available they contain some portion of amorphous and some can be like 
crystalline. So, when some polymer is a mixture of amorphous and crystalline uh, mean arrangement, then this will have both T G and T M. T M uh, melting temperature that is property of crystalline polymer and T G that is uh, property of amorphous polymer. Uh, so, uh, then we we have looked at this stuff and uh, from here you can see there are various polymer they are used and uh, for synthesizing the membranes and uh, you can see their properties like glass transition temperature or melting temperature are given and they have various range. Uh, so, when you look at the I mean permeation through the membrane, we want such membrane because here are now different material, which material we should select actually we should select such material which is good for our separation actually it provide uh, high permeance of the one component of the feed and overall high permeance ratio. I have talked about this in detail in last lecture if, uh, I mean you can just check what does this mean. And then we looked at this that uh, this uh, this permeance is actually analogous to the uh, something called mass transfer coefficient and uh, if you look at its equation that molar flux through the membrane is equal to permeance multiplied by driving force and this permeance is actually ratio of permeability over membrane thickness. So, we talked about this that how membrane thickness or permeability will affect the separation through the membrane. And then membranes are uh, actually classified into two categories uh, dense membrane and porous membrane. Dense membranes are also named as like non porous membrane. Uh, they usually do not have any pores or if there are pores they are very small like few angstrom in diameter. And these uh, because most of the time they are non porous membranes. So, here separation did not take place based on size uh, it will take place based on various properties. Actually here uh, I mean uh, such material which can diffuse through the membrane can easily be separated from the other material which cannot diffuse and with the help of these membrane even those material are those uh, feed in which there are more than one component and they are of somehow similar size they can be separated. How because here uh, you you can separate them not based on the size, but based on other properties of diffusion through membrane material. Uh, and uh, I mean through these material mainly uh, this uh, diffusion takes place along the paths of like uh, chains uh, that your component which can diffuse through the membrane will pass through the polymeric chains and will leave on the other end and other can pass through that. Uh, then when you look at the porous membrane they are also named as micro porous membrane and they were categorized into uh, three types. So, ultra filtration, micro and nano filtration and we have seen that the difference between these three is actually based on their pore size difference. And uh, because uh, they have different pores so here actually separation takes place based on size. Uh, so, uh, they are good for those separation in which you have some smaller and larger molecules because uh, the pores are of different size and they can help you to go for this kind of separation. Uh, so, uh, they have usually high uh, I mean uh, high selectivity here uh, can be achieved when molecule are different in size like some are smaller some are higher then you can highly select selectivity mean actually the membrane selectivity that membrane should allow one of the component to pass through and other should stop it. Uh, so, in these membrane if uh, I mean uh, you look at the pore pore define actually that uh, how much will be the flux and rejection actually membrane material did not uh, define the flux and rejection, but uh, when you look at the dense membrane in those membrane actually your material of the membrane define that what will be flux and how much will be the rejection through the membrane. Uh, and then uh, we said that because these polymeric membrane are usually uh, applicable or they can be used for uh, low temperature like up to 200 degree C and uh, they are also uh, should be used where the uh, I mean your chemical which you are separating should not react with the membrane. Uh, so, in all those cases where temperature is high and uh, there is a chance of reaction of your uh, I mean feed with membrane material then you go for some inorganic material and in our inorganic material membrane. So, uh, they were formed of different uh, I mean uh, material alumina there is uh, I mean glass membrane there are ceramic based membrane zirconia and all other. So, up to here we have uh, discussed yesterday uh, I mean in which uh, finally we stopped here that uh, in a broad classification you can look that membranes uh, like have symmetrical and asymmetrical types.
uh, actually symmetrical membranes are those membrane which are symmetric throughout the structure like here you can see they have more, more or less same size pores uh, this is dense membrane which ha which is overall dense throughout the structure and this is electrically charged throughout the structure but when you look at uh, an isotropic or asymmetric membrane so they have different pore sizes like in this membrane and here you can see the top surface is like uh, non porous or dense and then there is porous below that and in this membrane there are some uh, portion polymer matrix and then there are something uh, I mean liquid filled pores so these are also asymmetric membranes. Uh, so uh, before I start I will talk about the membrane modules here this is uh, just uh, I mean uh, one illustration for uh, indicating that which kind of the or which type of the material are separated actually in different membranes as we have talked that membranes are dense and uh, as well as porous membranes so overall when you look at the sizes of various molecules so which molecules are separated where actually. So, here if you look at uh, some in conventional filtration so that that has pore size some filter which are commonly used. So, they have some pore size of 10 micrometer to 100 micrometer here this is the, the range of those mean they, they are available in this range most of the time. Uh, so, overall in this range the, you can just uh, mean remove very large size molecule like starch or sometimes somehow, uh, somehow some parts of bacteria, but not even bacteria can't be removed because the, he has mentioned here 1 micrometer. So, they can be removed with this yes starch and all other molecules which are larger than that they can be removed with this uh, mean conventional filtration. Uh, then when you jump towards microfiltration, uh, so its size is more or less ranging from 1000 angstrom to 10 micrometer. So, in this uh, you can separate uh, somehow bacteria, yesterday you have seen I mean their application was the separation of bacteria and yeast from some liquid stream. And then uh, overall you can see there is the ultra filtration, so that has a range of uh, uh, from 10 uh, angstrom to uh, I mean 1000 angstrom. So, overall uh, I mean this is used for separation of various components like uh, here uh, you can see hemoglobin uh, as well as these viruses can be separated uh, by using uh, these membrane. And then there was um, ultra filtration, micro filtration and there was nano filtration actually here uh, I mean if you remember that has a size of 1 angstrom to the 10 angstrom. So, overall reverse osmosis also lies somehow in the same range. So, uh, these small molecules which has small uh, diameter like sucrose as well as sodium water they can all be separated in nano filtration in and reverse osmosis membrane. Actually when you look at various books most of the time reverse osmosis membrane are I mean referred as uh, actually dense membrane which do not have any pores. So, they can separate all the stuff, uh, but uh, nano filtration membrane the size was given uh, that was like 1 angstrom up to 10 angstrom. So, they can also be used for this uh, removal of small size molecule. Uh, so, from here what uh, you can get the idea when you look at various filtration plants actually I mean before going uh, for suppose you are cleaning the water and water contain various contaminants various uh, I mean impurities. So, uh, before bringing the water to I mean the final separating membrane you can remove actually various components from the membrane by using different other membrane or filters. This will actually help to decrease the load of all pollutants on our last membrane. Uh, then later when we talk about reverse osmosis in detail, we will talk about various issues or various problem which take place if you do not go for like these prior filtration in membranes. Uh, but from here this is just to give you idea of average pore size of various uh, main membranes and relative sizes of solute like if you look at various uh, salt I uh, mean like there are salt, sucrose molecule, bacteria, viruses, water. So, what are their I uh, mean molecule sizes. Uh, one thing here maybe uh, in the last slides you have seen the ultra filtration, micro filtration and nano filtration uh, membrane pore sizes maybe they are not exactly here actually he has provided average pore sizes. Uh, so, they they can mean vary somehow in some, uh, some text, uh, so just just do not get confused with this. Uh, so, how does membrane work? I uh, mean when you look at these membranes now how the separation takes place you know that uh, when we started with the membrane. So, initially we said that actually membranes work somehow like this some feed enters in the membrane module here this is membrane like and uh, 
something will pass through the membrane so that's called permeate here and uh, something which does not pass through the membrane and leave the system that was called as retentate so this was just simple uh, I mean uh, illustration to show how membrane will make separation but now we have to look at this that how does membrane make separation so here uh, actually before uh, I mean uh, we will we will just just discuss these various types of membrane which are mentioned here but just consider here it is hollow fiber membrane there are the fibers small diameter uh, you can consider the fibers and uh, they are hollow from inside uh, you can just somehow consider them as a tubes uh, but uh, there are also tubular modules and hollow fiber modules so uh, through these modules if you look at uh, this diagram in at the bottom just look at this uh, the feed is entering from one end and overall if you have to understand this system just uh, consider it as a shell and tube diameter uh, sorry shell and tube heat exchanger so if you remember there is some shell which is not actually shown here to you outside this but in the above diagram you can see some shell and inside there are the tubes so there was something called tube sheet so overall you can see here uh, this is also called tube sheet here in uh, this even membrane so uh, these tubes are fixed to this tube sheet and when this feed will enter to one side in this actually arrangement feed is entering from one side so uh, when it passes through these tubes uh, actually tubes allow permeate to just leave so permeate uh, some molecule of this feed will just leave through these uh, various tube and that leave as a permeate as shown here while other which didn't pass through the membrane that will move towards the other end of this tube and that's called retentate that will leave from this uh, membrane module without passing through the membrane uh, sorry without uh, just mean uh, crossing the membrane or I can say without just permeating through the membrane uh, so uh, they are usually hollow and thin walled porous tubes so hollow fiber also have some of similar structures here a bit different I mean illustration is provided in which you can see that uh, there is uh, some membrane module uh, so inside this membrane module there are fiber and they are in the form of U tubes you can see that uh, they are like uh, U tube uh, membrane modules uh, so hollow fibers here overall some feed enters from this point and when feed is entering from this point some components of the feed can penetrate through the membrane or can pass through the membrane and they will be collected inside in the in inner side here they are entering from the outer side and some can pass through this some will not just pass through this membrane so all those which are passed through this they are collected inside membrane and as you can see that here we have uh, like membranes uh, uh, they are hollow from inside so all those uh, liquid which is collected or those component collected are called permeate and they are leaving from this end while other uh, definitely maybe you will be thinking how here some mixture I mean feed can get mixed with permeate no you will have some uh, tube sheet here which will stop the mixing of uh, your feed with this permeate while other component which can't penetrate through this membrane which can't permeate through this membrane so they will just uh, leave towards opposite end as uh, and are rejected as here uh, i have shown you some of one tube through this some can penetrate uh, through this membrane can uh, go through this membrane can permeate through this membrane so this is the permeate and other which can't pass through this membrane will leave as a retentate so here in this illustration you can see that some gas mixture is entering to the membrane module uh, this is uh, somehow just similar like uh, the system which uh, you have uh, seen here I mean tubular uh, membrane module so in this actually what is happening here uh, some some of the component which uh, just pass through these tubes uh, they are leaving they are impurities and while other which didn't pass through the membrane uh, they are just I mean entering from one end and leaving on the other end so they are retentate and other which are uh, just leaving out they are called as uh, I mean which can cross the membrane and can go to the side they are called as permeate so uh, now what are membrane module this was about how membranes work actually on large scale so on large scale when we look for the application of membrane so usually industrial scale membrane required large areas so just just recall something from the industrial example which we discussed last week uh, that was uh, in the plant of uh, I mean benzene to uh, sorry uh, synthesis of benzene from toluene so there you remember that uh, 
we have somehow four membrane modules or four uh, parallel units were running and I told you that each of that has somehow area of 4000 feet square and overall a required area was 16000 feet square for that application. So, uh, how we can provide this much large area for the membrane in the plants when you look at industrial plants you, re you need from 100 to 1000 square meter of the membrane area. So, in order to provide that area we have to mean uh, uh, place the membrane somehow in such a way that we get something economical and efficiently packed uh, membrane area because uh, if you have to install membrane and uh, mean you will need large area then there will be problem to uh, fix the equipment and we have talked about this that membrane have one property they are compact as compared to other uh, separation units. So, the compact can be achieved actually if we just arrange the membrane in some uh, specific pattern. So, these uh, pack, packings or packed membrane are called actually modules. So, when you look at membrane module it is mean that how membranes are arranged on a large uh, to provide large surface area for separation. So, when we look at the membrane module they are just uh, mean categorized into various categories like they are somehow sometimes they are flat sheet membrane modules, they are spiral wound membrane modules and tubular or hollow fiber membrane module and one is uh, other that is called capillary module, but uh, we will just talk about these three types here in this lecture. Uh, so, here just you can see the, the different membrane module are shown to you these are spiral wound membrane module the first one uh, I will just talk uh, in detail about all this uh, I mean how or what are spiral wound module. Uh, the other is hollow fiber module uh, there are hollow fiber inside uh, this and this module is used as well uh, this something uh, also formed in the form of tubular structure I mean tubes are there and this is uh, in the form of uh, somehow you can say honeycomb shaped structure. So, uh, they are also like one module and overall here from this diagram you can see actually the these kind of phase somehow filter actually inside those there are a lot of membrane they are arranged for this separation and they are installed in some plant. So, let us talk about them I mean briefly each of these types. So, first uh, let us start with this plate and frame module. Uh, so, plate and frame module are also called flat sheet module. Uh, when we will talk about the others you will get this difference that this is flat sheet module actually. Uh, so, as its name indicate there is some plate and frame. Uh, so, overall uh, these uh, these type of module contain they have membrane there are feed spacers uh, I mean and uh, then there are product spacers and they are layered together between two end plates. So, overall there are some frames or uh, I mean membrane modules and uh, they are placed or they are available between two plate uh, two end plates. So, that is called plate and frame module. Uh, so, here uh, feed mixture I will just talk about this what he is saying this feed spacer and product spacer we will look at the diagram of this in next slide. Uh, so, feed mixture is uh, forced across the surface of the membrane. So, when you are forcing the feed mixture out of that some component will uh, permeate through the membrane and other components are rejected or uh, leave the system as retented. Uh, so, mostly when you look at these plate and frame module uh, in various among various application of membrane which you have seen. So, they are used for electrodialysis and for vaporation membrane application. So, they, they mostly use this plate and frame module. Uh, so, for small scale application uh, these are expensive uh, I mean they are used for these small scale application, but they are expensive as well as uh, there are some leaks from gasket. So, when we have plates and inside those plates we arrange all these uh, main membrane and uh, we have to give the path for feed as well as product to be collected. So, some gaskets are used and leakage occurs from those gaskets. So, especially due to this problem they are not used for gases. So, uh, they are used for electrodialysis and for vaporation. So, this is one of uh, plate and frame module uh, shown to you. So, overall just look uh, I mean this is uh, module in which you can see that uh, some feed is entering. Uh, so, 
just you uh, you can see the path of feed so this uh, he was calling as feed spacer so feed spacer are provided so that feed can pass through and uh, inside there are like these membranes are arranged so uh, there are membrane module they are placed uh, in between these plates so overall uh, these are membranes and when feed is passing through uh, this area uh, is forced through this area so uh, you can see that membranes uh, these module are I mean stopped from top and bottom so and any permeate which is collected can't leave uh, only it should leave through the specific path when you want to collect it so when you will uh, mean uh, force the feed through this path so some of the component uh, which can uh, permeate through this membrane so they will just just uh, mean go or pass through this membrane module and they are collected inside uh, in this capillary and overall uh, this is finally collected as a permeate while other which can't pass through this they, they will just go through this path and collect it in some area and then they just leave as a concentrate or you can call them that they leave as a retentate a uh, concentrate actually he is giving this name because that's uh, concentrated stuff uh, some of those components are now in more concentration as compared to others but this uh, we have already studied or we have given it the name of uh, like retentate so overall you can see that in half of the portion there is some stop disk stop disk mean this just separate two parts of this uh, membrane module so in first path just feed is moving towards top and then in the second path uh, overall you can see that uh, some uh, components of feed are extracted you have removed them but uh, you bring back to them through another half portion and uh, try to extract more components even to permeate some of the more components of this feed so you have achieved maximum permeate uh, which you want to collect or separate from here uh, so overall this is uh, like plate and frame module so i will just advise you kindly just look at some video uh, through youtube or uh, just look at more image of this plate and frame module if uh, still you have some confusion some uh, some of the other uh, pictures are also provided in your textbook so you can explore those as well uh, so from here uh, you can see another arrangement so in this feed is entering from the top and in this uh, like feed is just passing or we should say there is one pass of the feed overall in this module feed is passing two times or two pass type structure is uh, here but here i mean this is just separated into two halves one half passes through the one part and other half is passing through the other part so overall uh, this is just passing through this and uh, finally collected he has just shown feed in and uh, like uh, retent it he didn't show here something called like permeate so there will be definitely arrangement for permeate collection so as this is some membrane module so some of the component will be uh, permeated through this membrane and collected as well uh, so this was first of the module that was called plate and frame module so there are the plates and inside those plates we have the frame uh, in like in the form of these uh, membrane uh, they are separated with the spacer through which product can be collected as well as feed can be entered through the system uh, so next one that is called hollow fiber module so hollow fiber something hollow which is empty and fiber you know that uh, something which has very small diameter fibrous structure uh, so that's the hollow fiber module in the first which we have just seen that they were flat plates actually you can see that uh, uh, your membrane are also like flat here they are uh, not like rolled or they are not in the form of tubes so they are flat sheets but here when you look at these hollow fiber they are fiber they are tubular in the structure uh, somehow there is the uh, difference in the diameter of fiber and tube otherwise tubular module and fi hollow fiber module are uh, they work they work or they are somehow structured in the same way uh, so hollow fiber membrane they have advantage of uh, like hollow fiber module they have ability to be packed in a small area even large surface area membrane can be developed uh, hollow fiber membrane is the ability or has the ability to pack a very large membrane area into single module so here when we just arrange them in the form of tubular structure so uh, more surface area uh, can be covered or uh, more surface area of the membrane can be provided even in a small packed module uh, so overall he has mentioned here like they have 10 times uh, of spiral wound suppose we look at uh, some arrangement some 
uh, some structure in which if outer outer tube has the same area or outer, outer structure has the same area so inside that if you place hollow fiber they will have 10 times more area as compared to the spiral wound we will talk about this what is spiral wound uh, so uh, these uh, hollow fiber modules are commonly used for reverse osmosis as well for gas separation and ultra filtration these are the application in which they are commonly used uh, so here if uh, you have uh, we will again also look at its diagram in next slide so if you will have high pressure so in case of high pressure your feed should enter from the shell side uh, by the way we, you have just seen one figure few slides back that was for hollow fiber uh, that green color figure just look at this uh, from here yeah you can see that this one if uh, pressure is very high so you can just introduce feed from this shell side as i told you that you can just consider this hollow fiber and tubular membrane module just as shell and tube heat exchanger so here uh, in high high pressure application your feed enters from shell side uh, while uh, if uh, pressure is low like up to 150 psi so you just pass your feed through the uh, bore side or tube side actually so fiber size variation can lead to large variation in uh, module performance uh, so uh, when you look at their size actually fiber size when fiber size will vary so definitely there will be uh, i mean variation in module performance because suppose uh, fiber size is high uh, large so it mean you can you can just pack small number of fibers inside that module and then in that case definitely surface area will be less but if uh, you you just reduce their diameter overall uh, you can just pack more uh, hollow fibers and area required for separation will increase uh, by the way just look uh, for the reason why shell side is used for high pressure operation in this membranes just explore this kindly uh, so this is uh, hollow fiber module so overall you can see that uh, there are some fibers actually uh, they are a bit different from tubes as I told you that tubes will uh, most of more of most of the time they have uh, more diameter as compared to these fibers and uh, these uh, fibers are small in diameter overall their structure is more or less same so you can see here one of the hollow fiber membrane module so uh, this is from the website of any company which was provided these hollow fiber uh, in module so overall you can see that uh, on the one end there is one hole from here feed will enter and when feed will enter so the hair feed is entering actually on shell side uh, so it will just uh, keep passing through uh, this uh, structure so overall uh, those component which can just permeate through the uh, these hollow fiber so they will be just collected in inside uh, so they will travel to the other end as uh, you, you have seen I mean in the other slide uh, so here I mean they, there will be leaving something called permeate so others which can't pass through the membrane they will be collecting on this end and they will leave as a retentate so definitely here will be at the end of this membrane module after this I mean nozzle there will be something called tube sheet that will be just separating this retentate from permeate because if you just don't install any tube sheet on this end so this permeate and retentate will be again mixed but there is a tube sheet which just separate this I uh, mean the uh, retentate or concentrate from permeate which is collected here on the other hand here you can see in the I mean this diagram overall uh, this is this is quite similar to the shell and tube heat exchanger in which you have like two in, inlet and two outlets so uh, overall uh, you can see on this end I um, mean these two ends are provided and there are tube sheets on both ends and uh, here if feed enters suppose from this uh, uh, side or uh, from this port from bottom port feed is entering so at the end some portion of the feed is uh, penetrated through the membrane that permeate through the membrane and is collected as a permeate while other which can't pass through the membrane that will just leave from here as a retentate so there are various actually uh, structure that they can be arranged or they can be placed in the form of various structure like here you have uh, overall two opening on shell side and I should say just just uh, to give it similarity to shell and tube uh, so there is shell side two opening and two tube side but in this on shell side there are two on tube side there is only one 
by the way here you will be thinking so on the other end either tubes are open no they will be just clamped on the one end on this end they are definitely stopped uh, they don't have any opening on this end but they are just stopped uh, I mean they will be closed on this end so anything which goes through or which uh, penetrates in these fibers so that will be collected on the other end on this end nothing will happen but in this uh, kind of I uh, mean uh, module so definitely you can collect product from both ends or maybe you can stop one of the end and can collect on the other end and sometime this is also provided something you remember that was called sweeping in the start lecture when we were looking at the membrane separations uh, when we started with this there was something called sweeping gas or sweeping is used for I um, mean pushing off permeate so sometime you can use also this suppose you want to collect your product of permeate from this side so from this end you can just introduce sweeping gas so based on your application or based on your requirement you can modify the I um, mean these modules. So then there are spiral wound modules. A uh, spiral wound as its name shows spiral you know that something which is rolled uh, uh, our wound is something folded so spiral something is which is folded in the form of circle so that's called like suppose if I just fold something uh, in the form of circle so that's called spiral wound module so let's look at them uh, so here uh, membrane envelope uh, of a spacer and membrane wound around a perforated central tube uh, there is some perforated tube inside these uh, module so around that actually you just uh, you just uh, mean fold in a circular way uh, they are spacer than membrane they are folded around that tube uh, so module is placed inside a tubular pressure vessel uh, overall around these uh, main modules there is uh, some vessel uh, that can bear high pressure and most of the time when you look at spiral uh, this sorry spiral wound module so they have uh, they are used for reverse osmosis and gas separation application and uh, they are available in the far size of like 2 by 3 feet diameter of that module and uh, usually they are 3.5 feet long. Uh, so let us look at these uh, I mean figures to get more clear about area uh, sorry clear idea about these modules. So, uh, just for at first diagram from here you can see that uh, what we have actually we have membrane uh, there are some membrane and then there are spacers uh, I mean as, as you have seen this, this terminology was provided for a flat sheet membrane so when you have looked at uh, a plate and frame membrane so uh, when you have seen plate and frame uh, membrane so there you have seen that there were product spacers as well as then there were uh, like something called uh, feed spacers. Uh, so same uh, if uh, they are provided and they are not in the form of flat sheet what we do we just uh, I mean spiral wound them we just fold them uh, in the circular shape and uh, here you can see that they are just membranes are folded. So we, uh, for example you just take a page and fold it and uh, inside that page uh, you just place your uh, I mean uh, you can place pen so overall this uh, pen is something perforated tube here. So, when something uh, will pass through this membrane, so permeate is collected inside that membrane uh, tube and uh, that, will, that will pass through the membrane and is collected inside this tube and will leave from this anything which did not pass through the membrane is collected as a uh, I mean retentate. Uh, so, uh, here uh, this module is provided as he has mentioned that uh, they are uh, cased or they are uh, packed inside some uh, packing which can bear high pressure because uh, as we see we have seen they are used for either I um, mean something uh, gas permeation or reverse osmosis so for those application usually high pressure is needed so the casing which you are using should uh, be able to bear high pressure. So overall in this uh, module you can see that fees is entering from one end and uh, they are spiral wound I mean here module so some part will just uh, I mean permeate through the membrane and they are collected inside inner tube central tube and which are not collected they leave at the other end as a retentate. 
so maybe this is not clear to you but uh, one thing uh, i i want to just tell you here is uh, i mean uh, just uh, one video i will upload for uh, with the name of this uh, spiral wound module so just uh, go through that video that's four to five minute video and that has explained properly that how they work if you are interested to look how they work or how the main retentate and permeate are collected through these membranes so just just go through those uh, that video and you will get better idea about it so then there are uh, here uh, this slide actually shows now we have seen various module and suppose now you are thinking which module we have to use so this is a brief comparison between these modules uh, so no need to remember this this is just for your information uh, also it is not from your textbook uh, from some other book uh, I have just c collected this so just to give you idea uh, first point here is for uh, main manufacturing cost so you can see that here dollars US dollar per meter square are provided so hollow fiber capillary fiber there are spiral wound there are plate and frame and then there are tubular at the end so out of this uh, as we said we didn't discuss the capillary fiber actually capillary fiber are somehow similar to hollow fiber just uh, they they have very small size there are capillaries as compared to these tubes and fibers uh, so but uh, overall you can see that uh, their prices are given here uh, per meter square in US dollar so most of the time plate and frame and tubular are the expensive one but other uh, just leave second point uh, maybe if uh, you see it at this permeate side pressure drop so permeate side pressure drop if you look at the pressure drop so this is high in hollow fiber but uh, it is moderate in other two and the last two plate and frame and tubular it is uh, like uh, low pressure drop so these are the various parameters which you have to look for when you are going to select the I mean different modules for industrial application so more than one parameter are looked and then you decide that which should be used like uh, as uh, he mentioned last point uh, like limited to specific type of membrane material so hollow fiber and capillary they they are used for special type of material but others uh, they don't have uh, this limitation so any membrane material you can construct spiral wound plate and frame and tubular but hollow fiber and capillary they are used for some specific materials so that's it up to here actually we have talked about membrane modules so just briefly summarize this that membrane modules are actually uh, you can simply say that uh, that's the arrangement of large surface area membranes for industrial application and uh, there are different module types they are uh, simply flat plate uh, they are tubular and they are uh, hollow fiber as well as there are spiral wound module so we have just talked about them briefly about each type uh, we didn't go in much detail we have just talked how they are formed or how they are arranged actually how they look like and uh, which special application they are usually used uh, so then uh, there is next uh, and the last topic of this uh, main lecture uh, that's the membrane synthesis so how now these membranes are synthesized up to here we have uh, seen that uh, what membranes are what materials are used to synthesize the membrane so like polymer and inorganic and then we said that when you have to uh, use them on large scale so how they will be arranged we have talked about all this stuff now if we have to install that membrane and we have selected one of the types so how to synthesize that membrane uh, so several I uh, mean different techniques are several or different techniques are available to uh, synthesize these membranes so uh, I mean uh, to prepare this synthetic membrane or uh, man-made membrane so uh, some of these techniques can be used to prepare polymeric as well as inorganic membrane so here I have just given you the names of those techniques uh, because uh, this is not part of our this syllabus to talk about the in detail uh, so that's the main uh, that will become uh, are that's available for higher level for graduate course but just uh, you should remember few names that how they can be synthesized so some technique involve actually phase invariant technique there is uh, interfacial polymerization technique sintering stretching there is 
track etching and soil gel processes vapor deposition and finally solution coating so all of these uh, i mean uh, technique involve a lot of details and uh, you you don't need to go in detail for this subject at least if you are just interested you can go through some text in which they are explained uh, so overall if i just summarize here these membranes so uh, if you look at this membrane material, their preparation, structure, synthesis. So, first of all, you can see, you can start from this point, membrane material. As you have seen that membrane material were commonly, I told you yesterday that they can be just, just, just uh, separated into two like organic polymeric membrane and inorganic materials membrane or inorganic membrane. So, they are usually uh, oxides because you remember there was alumina oxide, silica oxide, zirconia and such stuff. They are ceramics, metals, they are formed of these material. And then there are mixed matrix membrane and mixed matrix membrane or composite membrane. Uh, composite means that is formed of more than one component. Sometimes they can be organic and inorganic they can be mixed and sometimes mixed matrix involve like uh, one membrane which we have seen that was something uh, polymer matrix and some liquid inside that so they are also called like this mixed matrix membrane so uh, commonly two categories which we have discussed here they were organic and inorganic so this third one just remember that there are mixed matrix or composite they are uh, formed of two I mean like they are not pure organic not pure inorganic they will be just mix of these two uh, so after that you can see that uh, when you look at membrane cross section so they are uh, the one diagram which we have discussed isotropic or symmetric uh, so they were like an isotropic or asymmetric in which uh, their structure was not same throughout uh, like the membrane and then uh, they 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 can have like thin layer or mixed matrix membrane by or multi layer uh, you have seen in various slides some of these types uh, so, after this uh, their shape how they are modeled, so they are in the form of flat sheet, hollow fiber, capillary or tubular. So, we did not talk about capillary, but capillary they will be uh, you know the, from this name capillary small size tubes, uh, they will be less than this uh, hollow fiber and tubular uh, less in diameter. So, then uh, the finally membrane pre preparation or synthesis methods which uh, in the last slide they were just names were given same names are provided here. Uh, so, that is it up to here in these uh, main lecture series of this week we have uh, discussed about membrane materials. Uh, I have just summarized in the last slide then there are membrane types so dense membrane and now porous membranes so and in porous there are microfiltration ultra and nanofiltration membrane then there are membrane modules so platen frame uh, there is uh, spiral wound and hollow fiber are tubular module membranes and then their synthesis involve various techniques uh, so that's it uh, this most of the stuff is from your textbook but few few uh, things i have brought from other book like one book uh, mentioned here so if you further want to read someone is interested in reading about these membranes so this member uh, book is dedicated for membrane so membrane technology and application by richard baker so this guy has written our work a lot on the membrane so this is one dedicated book for membrane and some of the uh, part of this lecture is actually from this book uh, but most of the part is from your textbook so you can just go through your textbook and you will get the idea that which is not available in your textbook just go through slides lecture and maybe you can consult this book thank you so much uh, and uh, kindly if you have any question just post by email or you can drop a text and uh, try to finish all these lecture by saturday of this week thank you